This video is a continuation of the previous video uh, doing a tutorial in Photoshop of a floor plan. So I cleaned up my floor and my marble countertop. Now I'm going to start rendering stuff from scratch in Photoshop. I'm going to start with my table here. I'm going to pick kind of a blue green color. And notice I'm still using the brush that kind of acts like a marker. And there's some opacity with that brush, as you can see the floor through that. So that's going to work out great for glass. We're going to apply a couple of layers here, make it look like it's some gradient. So we've got our highlights with white, and I'm going back in with uh, the teal color. Okay, that looks pretty good. So to finish this off, I'm going to give it a stroke. So if you double click on the layer, you can open up the layer style panel. And I'm going to give it a stroke and make it white. I'm going to turn the opacity of that down a little bit. You can see it's kind of making everything totally opaque. Okay, I also need my the foot to this table. So I made a smaller circle. I'm going to fill that in with some gray. And I'm going to paint this. This is going to be something that's kind of opaque, so that's fine to fill it in. Okay, now I'm going to give it a couple swipes with my marker brush again. And I'm going to move that below my glass layer. And actually, it didn't render how I wanted it to, so I'm going to drag it up again and then just change the opacity of that. Uh, now I'm making my post for the table. So basically three circles on top of each other. And I added some stroke to that as well. Okay, now I'm going to work on my refrigerator. Again, using my marker type brush. I'm sampling the gray color on my canvas already. And I'm just going to leave some of that area open there. You can see how I left that area open. It looks kind of like a highlight on top of the fridge. Added some quick lines there for a shadow. I'm going to do the same thing over here for my stove. Sample my gray color again. And I'm going to add some dark lines back in here. Darken up this electrical panel. Darken up my burners here. Okay, now I'm going to work on the stools here. So I'm using my magic wand tool on my SketchUp layer with the lines. And I'm going to expand that selection by two pixels. So that'll overlap the other lines so I don't have the break in the middle of the seat where that hardware is showing through. So I just filled it in with a, a reddish color. Now I'm coming back in with a lighter tone of that just to add a touch of a highlight there on the front of the seat and also the top of the seat back. And now I want to pick a darker version of that color and start to get some kind of shadow there where the seat meets the seat back and carry over a little bit to the side of the stool. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, we want a little bit of our mistakes to show through. Um, those little touches kind of add a nice quality to the rendering so it doesn't look too contrived. And I'm going to add a little bit of a stroke to this as well, just like we did with the table. And I'm going to add one more little highlight to the edge of this just to pull it off a little bit so that the 
material for this cushion doesn't look like it's completely matte. A little bit of sheen to it. And there's this line I created from the original hand sketch on the sink. So the sink is going to be a porcelain sink, and so we want that to look nice and bright on top. Inside, we can still keep that shadow with the gray marker that was added before. Also cleaning up this little bit of the line that's on the countertop. And again, some of those artifacts from our hand sketch are are good. We want to keep some of them, but some of them we kind of want to get rid of so it looks like the actual material that we want to show. So I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow in here just to set this thing off a little bit. And notice how I'm increasing and decreasing the size of my brush when I do this. And notice I'm not really hard calculating these shadows. This is just kind of a quick way to set this thing off. This is kind of like a contact shadow, kind of where the base of the cabinets hits the floor. And again, it just pulls off that whole countertop section a little bit. So when you have what you like, uh, you know, when you use an eraser and start to erase out the areas that won't receive the shadow. And you can keep some of it sometimes, like on the edge of my seat there, you can keep some of the overstroke from the shadow and actually enhance some of the areas you were rendering before. I'm just going to tap that back a little bit where the lines, so I had two shadow lines there that overlap. I just kind of tapped it back a little bit there. Uh, here, I also want to kind of clean up or add to this area down here. My chairs would actually cast a little bit of a shadow, but I'm not going to make that as hard as the other one. I'm going to add some lines to the outside of this sketch to give it more of a hand uh, quality. Like I overstroked the lines a little bit. And if you hit R and then you click and turn your mouse, you can actually rotate your canvas in Photoshop. So that's what that was there. So now I'm just kind of moving this because the shape of my brush will only allow a skinny line in the horizontal direction. So by rotating it, I can get the line quality that I want for the opposite direction. And if they're a little bit too harsh, you can always knock back the end of your lines with the eraser. So I noticed when I moved my layer up, my lines layer from SketchUp, I still had the hardware from that chair. I don't really want that, so I'm going to get rid of that. And this little piece here that was left over from my SketchUp render. So now I'm going to add in a light. Because my window's over here, I want to show that this is a light source. So I'm just going to make kind of a large, kind of trapezoidal 
selection and go back in with my marker shaped brush and then just take one big swipe and I can knock that back. It's on its own layer. I can knock that back in the opacity. Uh, and maybe I'm going to add just some overall light right here and see how that looks. So that looks a little bit too overexposed. So I'm going to knock that back a little bit. And I think more subtle is better. Um, if you start to play around with harsh shadows or harsh light from exterior lighting in these renders, it kind of starts to create a graphic of its own that's distracting. So I think keeping it simple is best. And here's the final rendering, and I think it turned out pretty good.